Boom. And we're live. Hey, all right. Hey, welcome to the Wang Show. This week we have John. It's been a while. It has been a while. I do you How remember long? the last time? No, I don't. I Someone remember in the audience. I vaguely know. remember a Santa hat, maybe. A so Santa it's hat. probably been a while. Okay, but yeah. that might have been the like the I, I've done this every year where I bring each person onto the show. Yeah, at the end. So well, that it might have been that. Yeah, when I got stuck at the U.S. border. People think, are saying yeah. John, but they're spelling it wrong. Oh no, someone nope. spelled it right. That happens literally every time. Yeah, like it, it happens ways. to me on Twitter, and my name is right there. It's on and, Twitter. And it, if and they it send it. you a message, it has the at and then the correct spelling of your name. And if you're on the forum, you might know in my signature, I say I spell my name without an H. Yeah. People still get it wrong, so I'm just I'm used to it by now. I don't even notice it anymore. Yeah, well, well that's a lie. I do, but you know, my problem is that I know like three different spellings of John. Well, What's no, the one of them is Johnny, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay. But his is, like, actually kind of weird for a Johnny. What is because it's five letters. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know. It, yeah. We're talking about the guy that does some of our server yeah. work here, who is yeah. also my landlord, funnily enough. So. And and people have seen him on camera. Ah, yeah, they have. Times. So, yeah. Johnny's, Johnny's basically the nicest person on the entire planet. But he can't make it. To so every single year we'll get into the show in a second. Don't worry, but every single year I, since I was like 15, I've been going to Pax West, and I bring all my friends every time. And Johnny can't make it this time. And really, it's very weird. It's actually like very, very weird that he's not going to be that there. That really is strange. Uh, the rest of the people that have been go that are going to be going are all like, it's so weird that Johnny's not going. to What are we going to do? I don't know. I feel like he would be the straw that serves a drink, so to speak. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be it'll be interesting, but it should be good. This week we have interesting news because like Computex is happening and E3 is right around the corner and all this kind of stuff. There's interesting stuff going on. We don't have a lot of gaming news quite yet because I think that'll probably be next week. Um, but we've got Intel news, a unnamed 28 core 56 thread CPU. We've got news about second gen Threadripper being on track for a Q3 2018 launch. That means this year. Also, massive changes to the Steam store. We were talking about this recently on a WAN show. It's going to be crazy. I actually think it's super cool, but we'll talk about that later. There's an obscene amount of notes on that. Uh, AMD unveiling a 7 nanometer GPU. That's insane. Gigabyte making fake RAM, and it's actually really cool. So it's kind of like bonded leather. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand that. And then actually my favorite news of this week, even though it doesn't necessarily sound super cool, Seasonic introducing SCMD and your cable clutter. It's amazing. I can't show you what it is right now. I'm getting one for surezies, but we'll have to talk about for that sure later. I'm constantly kicking the cables underneath my desk in my office. They so. won't help you with that. It's like cables inside your computer. Aww. But it's super cool. We'll get okay. there later. A boom! It worked! This week is going well. Yes. Ah, it was going well until I died, I guess. Rip. Also, Anthony Bourdain died. Yes, I know. Very sad. Uh, he, he was, what, 61, I think? I don't know. I liked him, though. That sucks. Fresh bucks! Fresh bucks! LTX, be there. Or, or don't. But preferably be there if you can. Because it's cool and I'd like to say hi. Also, Squarespace! Yeah! I'm going to put this back up here. And... We're back. Boom. Okay. That's all, that's all it takes. Wan show intro completed. Let's move up to the top because we've got this crazy Intel processor that has some interesting news coming with it. Thank you, by the way, to Vegetable Stew and Radiating Light for sourcing Ah, Vegetable this. Stew. I see what you did there. Oh. Very clever. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to post this link in the Wan doc. You look like you had something to say. Do you? I was just commenting on vegetable stew, although I did cover this today. Well, James covered it, but I wrote the thing today for TechLinked on this story. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So do you have any interesting quips from that? Because you definitely know more about it than I do. I have some interesting things to bring up, but okay, what um, do you think? Do you want me to, okay, well, without I guess without running through the bullet points first. So I'll, I'll give a quick TLDR. Sure, yeah. So Computex, Intel shows off this 28-core 56 thread CPU and they did this demo of it and it was like, oh man, this CPU is running at five gigahertz. It's so cool. Um, so after it happened, um, a few people noticed that there was a gigantic, weird, like industrial water chiller sticking out the back of the unit. Um, I think they had it set up such that you couldn't see it straight on when they were actually doing the demo oh, for members so of the press. They were 
So, but that wasn't even like the worst of it. They also said this chip was running at 5 gigahertz, not telling people that it had actually, in fact, been overclocked. So a lot of people were thinking that, <laughs> oh, this thing is just going to run, this freaking 28-core Xeon is just going to run at 5 gigahertz out of the box, which was not the case at all. Intel got called out on it. They had to acknowledge it. And then they ended up saying, oh, well, they blamed it on quote-unquote, the excitement of the moment or something like that, and they said that their guy running the demo just forgot. He forgot to say, oh, by the way, this is not running at stock speed. So people were very uh, understandably upset about That's this. That's so. lame, but honestly, I can kind of understand mm -hmm. if it's just the demo guy that forgot to say it. Now, if there was, like, press documents given out to any degree, it should have it in there. Yeah. And I'm, the guy yeah. shouldn't forget. Admittedly, I'm not sure if there were documents handed out but i, I have no I, idea i think it was just whoever was running the demo said five gigahertz if i'm not come mistaken, on so. man don't forget that so the yeah. processor is clocked at 2.7 gigahertz normally um and without revealing turbo speeds which they haven't done they were able to overclock it to five gigahertz which is pretty crazy um the demo setup was cooled by an 850 dollar uh, aquarium chiller, which yeah. consumes, which the chiller alone <laughs> consumes 1,200 watts and is meant to be able to cool a thousand liters of water. So we have just found an actual use. If you buy a 1,600 watt power supply, we finally found a real world use so case. So you run a 400 watt computer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 1,200 watt chiller. <laughs> that would be sick. I'd love to see that. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, we'll have to see how freaking hot this thing actually gets normally um, and how high you can overclock it with reasonable cooling solutions. And I'm sure Linus will be all over that once mm -hmm. he's able to get his hands on it. Or if I reasonable, like was a 480 millimeter radiator reasonable or? That's fairly aggressive. Yeah, um, but it's not the same. It's, it's a, way more reasonable it's than this. Than an aquarium yeah, chiller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like even even like a triple red. Uh, personally, I would like to see a double red, a double one twenty or a double one forty. Yeah, that that's very. Yeah. If you whatever you can overclock it on that, that's solid because I think that's probably where most people kind of are mm -hmm. when they're yeah, like really a, wanting to be an overclock. A nice thick thicc, but still regular sized radiator. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'd All be right. cool with that. So okay. that'll be interesting. Next up in crazy processor news, we've got a post from Alex Solo, thank you very much, saying that the second generation Threadripper is on track for a Q3 2018 launch. It's AMD Zeppelin Silicon. Let me get this on screen and in the Twitch chat. Zeppelin. So we've moved away from like earth moving material and now we're doing blimps. And awesome music. Mm-hmm. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Cool. 12 nanometer, 3264, second gen features. I know a lot of people are saying like, oh, it's it's not it's not the most exciting processor ever. Burr, 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 burr. I don't care. Is there? Uh, well, sorry, I'm happy go ahead. Yeah. that I, I'm mainly just stoked that they're. Mm -hmm continuing to step forward mm -hmm. instead of abandoning for a huge section of years again. Well, is there anything as like a most exciting processor ever anymore even? Just with the Not way the really, industry but has there's been. some like, really exciting computer hardware later on in the show. I am so stoked for this, you have no idea. I think most of the people in chat are gonna be like, yawn, but I think it's amazing, so don't worry about it. But yeah, I, I think this is super cool. It's I think it's great that they're pushing forward again with Threadripper, going with their big heavy hitter as well, bringing out another one definitely, this year. Definitely. That's super cool. They're not backing down. It's 3264, which is sick. Um, I'm really excited for this process. No, that's insane. Um, 250 watt TDP. Boom. So. Boom. Many. Don't even care. Super cool. Mm-hmm. So well, not not in a literal to... sense, but <laughs> yeah, ah, yeah. Ah. it's nice and warm actually. Uh, they've they've got it displayed next to some NHU 14s's, which aren't even that huge, so that's not too bad. That's a beautiful looking board. Good job, MSI. I like that aesthetic. That's cool. That one too. Woo, Asus. Everyone has cool boards these days. Yeah. I like that. Like when I mm -hmm. first got into computers, it was like, oh wow, you got a board with a black PCB. Yeah, it's that's just like, amazing. Even having a non-green, like it felt like back in what, like 2009, 2010, it was like, oh, the PCB is blue. Buy this, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. And now we have like like this one has like under lighting that's RGB and like metal accents and like aggressive little thing over the IO. Like they look so cool now. I don't know. That's pretty sweet. But yeah, this is cool. I'm very happy that uh they're they're launching another processor. I know some people weren't that interested, like I was saying earlier. Uh AMD Zeppelin Silicon has eight cores and is the first generation threadripper, and the first generation threadripper uses two of them to get the top skew of 16 cores. That's written a little oddly, but hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Um, moving on. Yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. Yeah. Uh, rumors are saying August, and there's no mm -hmm. pricing yet. Yeah, so coming up, hopefully, hopefully you got the dollar bills for it if you need 64 threads. Yeah, I was going to say, if you need that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need that, it's probably for some type of work application, so hopefully it's okay. I, w I would say almost certainly for work. Yeah. Like, maybe there's someone out there who just really likes benchmarking. Just freaking loves it. Yeah. Or, like, is just really, really into editing home videos in, like wicked quality <laughs> yeah exactly like like someone out there i need to have cinema level quality just, of my kid playing ball hockey. just spent like five figures on like a red or something and like i need yes i need to look, look make the driveway ball hockey yeah look like it was put together by i need to film yeah. my kids schooling the neighbor kid in hockey with a red yeah and then edit it very efficiently so when they send like the kids like Hockey mix takes the junior leagues. They're going to be like, the production values are amazing. We got we have we to have this, bring kid. this kid. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next topic posted by Matrix07012. Uh, James and I were. Someone is yelling. What the heck? Someone I don't know just... if uh, Twitch got to hear that, but James and I were talking about this last week. Uh, Twitch took a game down. Where you were a school shooter? Wait, Twitch did or Steam did? Sorry, Steam did. Okay. Completely, I don't know. I just, I said Twitch because I was clicking on the Twitch tab and it just like invaded my mm -hmm. brain. But yeah, St Steam took a game down because it was like about a school shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Twitch chat apparently heard the yell. So thank you, Apron. <laughs> um, but yeah, and my stance on that was essentially if Twitch wants to do this, if this is within Twitch's policies, why do I keep saying Twitch? If Steam wants to do this, and this is within Steam's policies, maybe I just you're say it aggressively. Red. Yeah, you're turning. If you're I, actually turning red. I don't like, like saying <laughs> the wrong thing, man. Let's go. Yeah, um, like, you probably can't tell at home, but this guy, <laughs> this guy looks like a lobster right now, like like to me. So uh, I have very pale skin, so it shows really easy. Uh, uh, it's it's that Scandinavia in me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I think it's completely within their right to take it down. Some mm -hmm. people were screaming for free speech, and I'm like, this isn't a government platform. It's it's a company. If they don't want to have a yeah, they can they can do basically whatever they want to with it. Yeah. But I also really like what they ended up doing, which is saying that we don't care anymore. Yeah. So what they're doing now is they're only removing items that are actually illegal or straight up trolling. Yeah. Quote, quote from them so yeah. but unless it's one of those two things then the game is probably fine so yeah so like my my stance on this is interesting because people there's actually a surprising amount of people that have asked me about this mm -hmm. um because of how i run the forum and how i run full plane because they're actually so different on the forum things get axed yeah all the time mm -hmm. it, this is a tech forum stop screwing around we're gonna get rid of that, your stuff it's a whatever. little bit it's a little bit different though because you're on the forum, you have to like keep peace between users, or it falls apart. This is just a store where you, if you don't bit, wanna, yeah. if you don't want to act interact with anyone, you don't have to. And it's also like the 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 center of the topic here mm -hmm. is supposed to be games, yeah, not a type of game. And the center of the thing on the forum is tech news. Mm -hmm. You go it's, or, or tech stuff in general. I was thinking the tech news section, but the computer stuff, tech stuff, gaming stuff, whatnot. If you're going outside of that. It might make sense in off topic, but if it's too far, like we're not, we don't want to mess with that kind of stuff. Sure. This is a tech focused forum. Floatplane, on the other hand, is a website for creators. If you are a user and you go on Floatplane and you don't want to see a certain type of content, don't give the person who makes that content your money and you won't see it. It's fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. So I don't really care what people do on the platform. And I don't, I don't want to care. I can, I can have the stance personally where I'm like, as a personal human being, as Luke, I don't like this content. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily hope that they do well. 
I don't hope that they have a big audience. But I'm just going to vote with my wallet. But I'm going not, to facilitate yeah. their platform and be impartial because okay. I am acting on behalf of a platform. Um, and I will do nothing to hinder them in any way mm -hmm. um, because that would be bad. Were you saying that the uh, Steam store was allowing the school shooting game or they took it down? I think they took it down. Okay. But um. I think that was... Um, because right now they're they're going with the allow everything approach, but I believe they took it down, um, and I believe they're keeping it down because I'm pretty sure the guy that made it was already banned from releasing games, and he made it as a troll. I'm mm, pretty sure. Okay. Which they okay. are reserving the right to kick off. Another interesting question is uh, what even is a game? Because you can publish stuff on Steam. Is it a game if it's a visual novel and you just click next constantly? Press F does, it, respects. Yeah. does it now make it a game <laughs> if there's multiple options to click next? That still could be a visual novel. It's just a choose-your-own-adventure visual novel. Does that make it a game? Does that not make it a game? It's a mm -hmm. it's an interesting conversation. What's up? Um, so this is why this is why I've sort of been like silent for a second. Um, because I think uh, so. Okay, here we go. Steam's policy change follows the platform's banning of controversial school shooting simulation game active shooter. So yes, you were you were correct. So they 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 took this down. Yeah, yeah. But I think so. Like, I think what this is saying is that they would have left it up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this guy was already banned off the platform. Yeah, they are. He, they think he's trolling. He's a notorious troll. He has. Uh, a record of having terrible customer service and all this other kind of stuff. Like, there's other reasons why they wanted to take this thing down. Um, so I think they're leaving it down because of those reasons. Gotcha. Uh, <clears throat> it's it's going to be an interesting time because I think this is going to spawn, not that there isn't already, but I think it'll spawn an incredible amount more of garbage on Steam. There is already a lot of garbage yeah, on Because Steam. there's no law against, like, a bad game. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I know what you mean, so... So they have, yeah, they've... It, it's it's interesting, and another thing that they were talking about is how apparently uh, th there was a lot of controversy in the community as to whether or not they should allow everything or they should ban a whole bunch of different stuff or whatever. There was a lot of controversy in the community, right? A lot of people were angry that they took this game down. I'm not. First of all, I don't care. Second of all, I think it's their right to do whatever they want. It's their platform. And third of all, they already didn't like the publisher. Bad customer service, troll, banned already in the past. So there's many reasons. But mm -hmm. some people were very upset that they took it down. Some people were very... Uh, some people think they should have taken it down. Some people think they shouldn't have, basically. And what Valve has said is internally, apparently they've had essentially that same war. They have like the same spectrum of people that are outside talking about this inside the company so they've essentially decided if if the community is all mixed and we're all mixed we'll kind of let the community sort it out well yeah i mean you, you talk about like a lot of trash potentially showing up on the platform but you know it, it, this is the same for like the app store or this is the yeah. same for google play there's a lot of stuff there that all that google or apple have done have vetted to say this does not contain malware but other than that there's no guarantee as to the quality of what you're buying, but the model still works, especially on Steam, where I feel like it's easier to filter out stuff that you don't want to see as far as like recommendations or whatever. I do think they'll need to do a much better job of categorizing and filtering things. I yeah. know they do some suggestions already, but they need to amp up that mm -hmm. system. I know that uh, they plan on making it so there's parental controls in terms of what stuff you can see and what stuff you can't mm -hmm. see obviously that's gonna have to come in so like theoretically you wouldn't be able to see active shooter or uh a game with wife or something yeah banging simulator 2019 <laughs> Uh, unless you have your settings to be uh, to be allowed to see those types of games. waifu banging simulator. It's the, 2019. It's yeah. It's yeah. next year. Yeah, 10 percent more polygons. Already. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. It's the best game, if it even is a game. I don't know. Um, moving on to my favorite thing in this show. I don't know if everyone else is going to agree with me, but I think it's freaking fantastic and I'm getting one for surezies. Uh, this was posted by WMK Groom AK on the forum. Uh, it is a PC per article and it's from Seasonic. It is the Seasonic SCMD. Well, let's have a look at this thing. It's the System Cable Management Device. That's what you, SCMD You think they could have well, you know what I would say you think they would come up with like 
if they're going to have a four-letter name, they could do something sexy, you know, like the NZXT puck or whatever it is. And that was that, yeah, that, 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 SCMD doesn't skimmed. like skimmed. I'm just gonna go down to the store and buy some skimmed. Uh, so what's cool about this is it's this bar. What is this sound? Good. That's um, happening. someone is shuffling through some equipment over there. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, Twitch chat, but it and YouTube later on. But it's this bar that you can put into the back of your computer. You can see there's some SSDs mounted here and stuff. And you plug all your power supply cables into the bottom of the bar, and then you branch off them later on, higher up. So, it's, you know, speaking of NZXT, they have um, a few of their case designs. Like, I know the S340 is notable yeah. for this. They have the cable management bar built in, but this one looks a little bit, a little bit more like a one-size-fits-most kind of solution instead. Yes, yeah. and my understanding of it right now is like, because in this picture, in this picture it shows that it's connected directly to the power supply. But uh, this bar you can see is off by itself there. Like I don't, I don't have a ton of pictures of this thing, but my understanding is that you should be able to get it separately. That's what. Yeah, it kind of. I mean, if they're going to, if they're going to inter, if they're going to introduce this thing called the skumed, and they're going to make a big deal out of it, you yeah. would think that you could buy it without buying a Seasonic power supply. So apparently, that is an RGB logo. So this Seasonic logo is RGB. Uh, Can I say I'm a little bit surprised by this? Because it's RGB. See, Sonic's whole like mo as a company, they're they're very like straightforward. Not a whole lot of frills. Like if any of y'all if y'all follow C Sonic on Twitter, you probably know what I'm talking about. But the stuff they make is pretty good. So even, I really like e even stuff. something even we we were not compensated to say that. Just personal opinion. But yeah. um But uh. Well, if you look at my yeah. uh personal rig, there's a C Sonic. In it. Right. Yeah. Geo Dude has a C Sonic. Yeah. Course, that's right. But yeah, even and that was not a yeah. sponsorship. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, continue. Fine. No, just I was just gonna say even something as you know a simple provision of an RGB logo surprises me a bit but I think it looks pretty sharp so yeah yeah, yeah. like even their prime power supplies there's no RGB on it um, but yeah apparently it does drop your efficiency by 1% overall that's really not a lot um, my main thing is in in what it looks like this case right here in my case at home cable management in the back of tempered glass cases especially when there's not a big gap is a nightmare. Yeah, and this absolutely. looks really good. Yeah, and that's the trend now, isn't it? Because yeah. you're seeing more and more cases at even like like reasonable price points where it's tempered glass all the way around. And I think there was just an assumption that people thought this would be cool, and that has been true to a degree. But there's also plenty of you out there that just want to hide all the messy cable routing behind the motherboard tray. So it looks like it can power some fans. Are those you see this? Are, right the, are those fans or those SATA? Fan. I think you're right. Yeah, those look, those look like fan cables. Yeah, everything is seems like it's seemingly intelligently placed to, <laughs> like this looks like a SATA bridge coming right off of there with mm -hmm. a really short run directly, just because yeah. you have some right there. Yeah. So this uh, is right up yeah. at the top, and it's your CPU power, 24 pins right off on that side. Like it looks like yeah. they've paid it, attention. It, it does, as long as you're not running some like weird exotic setup where you have like SATA headers like all the way up towards the top. It looks like it's probably fine for most but systems. Even then, it might work. I just I don't have very good pictures. I don't know the, yeah. the, the... And this, okay, to be fair, this little blue cable, I just realized almost certainly doesn't come with it. These are probably aftermarkets. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe they sell them as like a kit that like goes with it we'll or have to see i, I don't yeah. know a ton about it right it could now. just be cable mod cables i don't know but but i actually think that's really cool that's that's the first I, this happens every show i don't know why google docs decides to sign me out part way through every single time it's that's so annoying that's happened to me before when i've tried to <laughs> upload tech wiki videos thanks google but um Ugh. but uh, it, I, it, it's, yeah. it's the first time in a long time that i've looked at a piece of computer hardware and been like i am going to buy that basically now and put it in my system right away. The 1% efficiency drop is really funny to me. Not because, well, I do think it's good that they're being transparent about it, but I can see someone out there with like an 80 plus power supply, like the lowest tier of 80 plus, and then he hooked this thing up to it and they're like, oh, well, <laughs> there, there goes my superior efficiency to to that, to that you know, um, raid max power supply, my plebeian neighbor, blah, 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 <laughs> whatever. So, uh, I don't Apparently know. it will come in three know. sizes, which makes sense. There's probably like general ITX cases, general MATX cases. Oh, are they going to make ATX? different sizes of it? Yeah, three That's sizes. Great. Yeah. You know, I, and I know I said this before, but I'm still baffled as to why MATX is not a more popular thing. 
if you're a gamer, it's like the most logical four factor to get, but that's a different discussion. So I, yeah, I think it's I I like it, and it's really not popular, but I yeah I agree, mm -hmm. and I have no idea why. But on that note of having no idea why, I have no idea why if you are making a new website and don't have a website yet for your like small business or self or whatever, <laughs> you don't check out Squarespace. Uh, they have 24-7 oh, live man. chat and email support. So if you have any problems, I have no idea why you wouldn't just contact them. Also, it's only 12 bucks a month and you get a free domain if you subscribe for a year. They have responsive design so it looks great on your various devices like your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your your watch, your desktop, whatever, your TV, doesn't even matter. They have commerce modules, so you can have a free built-in online store if you want to sell some stuff, which is really cool. No, screw off, don't restart. I pick a time, which is not now. We're just having some slight technical Go difficulties. Away. 9 p.m. I hate Windows 10. Why are we using Windows 10 on this computer? Anyways, moving on. Uh, <laughs> cover pages. If you want to have like a one simple page set up, which is just good for like resumes or cover letters or like, hey, look at me. This is my about me page. It's perfect for that. Also, everyone can now publish content in the Apple News format directly from their Squarespace blog module, which makes it available to millions of potential users because there's tons of people on that. You can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. Day. And when you do decide to sign up, check out this link right here, squarespace.com slash WAN and offer and put in offer code WAN to save 10% off your first purchase. You know, I also have problems saying Squarespace. For, whenever I do it, whenever I do a Squarespace thing for TechWiki, I say Squarespace. Squarespace. I think, Squarespace. I, I, think I almost said that. I'm I don't like, think I've why ever do I do this? done that before. Yeah. Maybe it was like your presence. Oh my god. See, <laughs> now, now I'm just ruining the, the the rest of like our productions now. Like, and I, I hope Linus doesn't see this. Yeah. <laughs> want to ruin things like your accounting and like your write-offs, you could use FreshBooks. You should use FreshBooks. To keep track of everything. Uh, FreshBooks is the super simple invoicing tool that actually does a lot more than just uh, invoices. It helps you keep track of uh, your invoices. It helps you keep track of your expenses. It helps you keep track of your hours, all that kind of stuff. It keeps track of who owes you what, which is great. It also has a feature that tells you when your clients look at an invoice for the first time, and it has a mobile app, which has all the functionality of their desktop application, which is really good because a lot of new business uh, owners just use phones to run through their stuff so they can move around and do things. Uh, you can take FreshBooks wherever you go, which is great. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to their support staff or you'll speak to a human. No phone tree, no escalations, no return calls, just answers. Also, visit freshbooks.com slash WAN and enter WAN in the how do you hear about a section when you sign up to get a free trial, which is pretty cool. And speaking of pretty cool, LTX! You're pretty cool if you show up to LTX because then I'll, I'll see you. Um, and that would be pretty neat. LTX ha is a meetup and interactive tech event. The interactive, honestly, the meetup part is is hopefully cool. You get to meet all of us here at Linus Media Group, um, which might sound weird because I'm not part of uh, whatever. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Um, but you you get to meet everyone from Linus Media Group plus me. Uh, and the really cool part, though, and the reason, in my opinion, why you should go is because it is a interactive tech event. It's not just a convention where you mm -hmm. get to go see a couple booths and you maybe take a picture with someone and you bail. There are you actual get to go things do to do, stuff, which yeah. is amazing. Like I like I'm not even kidding or trying to oversell this at all. I had so much fun last year. It was very very enjoyable. I liked it as well. And, and like it was so cool that Rod and Bob were there and showing people how to do hardline water cooling bends with actual yeah. tubes. You got to sit there with a heat gun and make a tube bend with hardline water tubing, which yeah. takes some of the fear out of it. This year we're going to be doing tutorial. Deleting yeah. of CPUs. That is sick. Where else can you just try to learn that from people that really know what they're talking mm -hmm. about? I don't know. LTX is a really cool event. If you want to check it out, you absolutely should. It is held on July 14th at the Richmond Olympic Oval in Richmond, BC. I know it's in Canada. I'm sorry. Try to get here if you can. The good news is you don't have to know how to skate. That's true. Unlike in 2010 when they had the Olympics there and they had yes. the speed skating. Yeah. That is the not ice a is thing gone. anymore. So you can, yeah. you can just walk in. You don't have to skate in. Yeah. So it's, it's okay. completely fine. Completely fine. <laughs> uh, current booths include a blind cable management competition brought to you by CableMod, a delitting workshop so you can bring your CPUs and we'll show you how to delit de it, a cable toss, or sorry, case toss 2.0, which is cool. That was a good idea that it got updated. Uh, Multi-headed VR so you can go up against each other in VR, which is cool. A LAN? 
Like that's an, cool. We're gonna have like an actual lantern. Yeah, yeah. A 12k ultra wide gaming setup. What? That's like 4k, but times three. <laughs> times three. Um, and more. There will be more on top of that. There's gonna be food. There's gonna be mu- music. There's gonna be music. Probably. Okay. Where's Colton? I wonder, like, is it live music, or are we just going to play music over speakers? Um, please direct all inquiries. Uh, Twitter at Colton underscore Potter. That. Yeah. Ask him everything. <laughs> There's going to be cool systems to look at, for sure. More room, more games, more swag than last year. The fact that we have more swag is insane, because every single person left with at least one thing last year. There's special guests. There's exclusive live unboxings, just like last year. Linus will probably drop something. Probably. Yeah. Uh, and more, which includes the Linus dropping something. Come hang out. Tickets start at $35 Canadian. That's really not that much money. It, was, it really isn't. It's worth <laughs> almost nothing. 35 Canadian. If you're American or from the EU, you probably have that much in like whatever your currency is, just in your couch cushions right now. <laughs> so, and you can check. It says them out, but what? That's weird. It's just, you can check the link out in the link below, uh, or on screen if you're watching on Twitch over there. LTXExpo.com. It's it's super hard to get to. Um, and then that brings us to Ziflot Plain. Uh, which oh. I don't know if I have. We had a very, very, very illuminating episode of Tech Wiki out on Float Plane today. Oh, very illuminating. What one is it? Should I tell them, or are we, are we, are we really uh, trying to plug is it this one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Though, it, see if this guy says it's interesting, he's been doing this longer than I have. So no, that's actually I. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I want to know. So we're gonna we're gonna show my screen so it doesn't seem insane. But there's a tech cookie episode on the fastest possible internet. Speed. How fast can you actually go? Yeah. How fast can you download? Gotta go fast. Questionable videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, pretty much. That's a question. Uh, th- there's there's uh, AMD's 32 core FU to Intel. Wow, that's a little... For a second, I thought you were going to read out a model number that started with FU. Uh, But... Uh, Portable professional workstation with three displays. That thing is actually insane. And a pumpless liquid cooler from Der Bauer, which that's another video. Both these videos at the top, I'm super interested in checking out. Anytime Der Bauer does anything... It's amazing. They sound very, like, German and intense, you know. It, well, yeah, it, it is. German engineering. Uh, yeah. Also, there is Bitwit Ultra on here and Tech Deals. I'm not going to show you their guys' their stuff because I don't know if I'm, like, really necessarily even allowed to. But if you're a mm-hmm. fan of Tech Deals or if you're a fan of Kyle at Bitwit, uh, check out their channels as well. Their stuff comes on here a week early. Everyone's using the same model right now. Full Plane does not make people use this exact model, but everyone has done the exact same thing, which is fine, but it's three bucks per channel. So far, every single person has gone with $3 Mm -hmm. and you get their content a week early. The comment section is awesome because there's way less cancer than on YouTube. Uh, Way less. It's like always positive discussion, which is super Mm -hmm. cool. And we have, uh, in terms of features that are coming soon, one of the really cool ones that people have been asking for a while is playback speed. There's some guys that apparently watch it like two times or one and a half times on YouTube because they just got to get stuff done. I ha- I'm guilty of watching things at 1.5x on YouTube sometimes. So that yeah. is that, that will that's be actually a good feature. Fully operational yeah. Uh, yeah. relatively soon. So and that's just coming. the comment section thing on float plane, you can actually have a comment score in the negative. So if someone yeah. just posts like uh, <laughs> if someone just posts the hottest of takes, they'll get like a minus 50. So I think that's it was perk. on this video, but I don't see it. But someone said first, and they're just like, no, that was on. 26. That was on mine. Oh, that, 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 that was, was on. Wiki? That was on today's tech wiki. That was so funny. Yeah, there first mi- minus negative twenty nine. Yeah, just slammed. So uh, yeah, you you can do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Um, for yeah. those of you who watched um, already, thanks very much. Shout out to Portugal. You'll know what I'm talking about if you watched. If not, you'll see next week. So. Shout out to Portugal. Cool. I mentioned Portugal very randomly in my, in my yeah. video. So. I, I'm definitely going to yes. watch that. That's yeah, so, so thank you to all of our fans in Porto, in Lisbon, in the Azores, wherever you may be in Portugal. <laughs> Good luck in the World Cup. So Heck yeah. All right. Okay, moving on to back to uh, news topics. Thank you, Atlas Rafe, for posting this on the forum. AMD unveils seven nanometer 
GPU at Computex. Super cool. Let me just get this stuff. If you want to start, I'm going to get this stuff in Twitch chat and sure. up on the screen. Okay. Um, also at Computex, big surprise there, right? Um, AMD announced the first 7 nanometer GPU launching in the second half of 2018. It's a big deal because Intel hasn't, is even, a big deal. Intel hasn't even gotten to 10 yet, and AMD is already announcing, hey, we're going to have yeah, okay. a 7 nanometer GPU. Oh, well, this is a GPU. So to be fair to Intel, they make CPUs. It's a little different. Still. Yeah. Well, well um, what does Nvidia have right now? Do they have? Are Are they on ten yet? Uh. I admittedly why have is forgotten. My brain farting? Yeah. I'm pretty. I'm sure Twitch has screaming at me for that Intel gaff, by the way, because we're talking about GPUs, but that's okay. Let's see. They've been on ten for a while. I think. Oh, have they? Okay. Why am I blanking? <laughs> I shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, 1080. I just love having dead air. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's so great. It's, I mean, it's... Um, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, 16. Yeah, Pascal. 14. So Pascal is what, 14? 16 and 14. 16 and 14, okay. So there you go. So, yeah, so we're, they're basically having that. AMD is having that um, with Vega. So AMD will have Vega on 7 nanometers inside of the new Radeon Instinct part. Uh, they're claiming 25%, or excuse me, 35% more performance over the previous gen 14 nanometer part. So, so, they're, 14, so they're having it is so what they're doing. So 14 nanometer yeah. is, I remember there was a split. And I was trying mm -hmm. to think of what numbers it split on. But anyway, okay. 14 nanometer is 1030, 1050, 1050, 1050 Ti. So the lower end silicon is 14, and then for the higher end chips, we're using 16. Yeah, to oh, 16 but, yeah. starts with 1060. Okay, yeah, big. I see. Yeah, 16. So so there you go. So NVIDIA's latest offerings are either 14 or 16, depending on what you get. AMD is going down to 7. Uh, twice the power efficiency, So which kind of makes sense, right? Because it's two times the density of their last gen, which was 14. So um, this now means AMD is ahead of the GPU game in this one area because even Volta, NVIDIA's newer gen architecture, is at 12 nanometers right now. So, uh, but do note that there actually isn't an industry standard way to measure transistor sizes. So um, you're, it, it, I think it used to mean a little bit more than it does now. Mm. So do take that number with a small grain of salt, but it's still a pretty big deal. So. Also remember that it's, I believe it's square nanometers. So seven is like mm -hmm. considerably smaller than 10. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like how four square inches is a lot smaller than, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, Okay. just a thing to remember. There you go. Uh, someone in the Twitch chat reminded me of that, so thank you to whoever that was. So prepare for high wattage power supplies being even dumber unless you have a water <laughs> chiller from an aquarium hooked to a computer. So yes, yes, of course. Now, okay. This wow, is what is that cool cacophony well. back there? L loud noises. Uh, so this is another really, really cool piece of news mm -hmm. in my opinion. This is posted by Shreyas One on the forum. Gigabyte making fake RAM. It's fake, except it's super cool and, and you want it to be fake. So I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, do you know about this? I know about it now. So apparently they're selling their um, Aorus. Is that how you pronounce it? Aorus? Aorus? Aorus, Aorus, Aorus RGB LED memory, um, which is it's not surprising. That's sort, of, that's sort of their like gamer line of stuff now. So it's going to have all, all the RGB. So two of the sticks are your run-of-the-mill 8 gig uh, DDR4 memory modules, yeah. but the other half of the bundle is two sticks of fake RAM. They're made of the same aluminum housing, but and they have the LEDs that can sync up with your actual RAM sticks, but they have none of the memory bits. So if you can't afford to populate every single slot on your motherboard with actual RAM, but you don't want it to look like there's big gaps in between your RGB, you can get this instead. You can save some money and have it look like they're all populated until you can afford more actual RAM. Now, I don't personally care at all because I've never cared about fully populating slots. Mm -hmm. I don't think it looks bad, but I am 100% certain because I know them uh, that there are people that do care about fully populating all their slots. Yeah. And RAM is incredibly expensive right now. So the fact that they are able to bridge that gap a little bit, you can fill all the slots, but you don't have to spend ludicrous amounts of money. 
That's well, cool. there's a certain effect you get, you know, because when you have all the slots populated, if the light bars on, I, on top yeah. are, are THICC thick enough, then you will have an effect that where it looks like a big block or a big oh, brick yeah. instead of like little strips of color. Or so and people yeah. want that. So I don't mind the strips of color thing, but yeah, yeah I, I I just understand mm -hmm. how yeah. people like that aesthetic, yeah. and it still gets you the the sticks of RAM that actually have memory on them in this kit that we're talking about here is eight gig dims each mm -hmm. so you're getting 16 total gigs of ram which is pretty solid like, yeah so so the modules the fake modules can still communicate with the other ones but they just don't have any actual ram on them but yeah. um so um do note if you're interested in this um right now you have to buy it as a whole kit but gigabyte is considering the possibility of just selling the fake sticks separately at some point so i think they'll do that based on can we like not and say we did <laughs> um uh so <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea no uh so, hey, so there we go <laughs> they'll probably end up selling them individually if these kits sell well enough yeah it makes sense um it's it's probably like a manufacturing mm -hmm. yeah. worthiness situation i could see it happening because I, i'm sure there's plenty of people who have bought ram they didn't need just so they could populate all their slots so I, I'm sure this happened. Again, I, I know people that have done that. There we go. I even know people that have bought the same looking kit, just lower capacity for the second set. Because Definitely. they're like, I don't even need more RAM. It's yeah. It's like, oh, man. Okay. And then you get into this whole like Catch-22 where even if you don't need more, like, oh, let me just buy like a one gig stick of this thing. But it's higher end RAM that has the R RGB, so you can't. So. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, so this one, <laughs> moving on, this was posted mm -hmm. by SC2 Mitch on the forum, just like every week, dude. Thank you very much for posting. Uh, the the source of this article is motherboard.vice.com. As many of you have probably heard, GitHub is being purchased by Microsoft. Now, GitHub and GitLab are different things. I'm just putting that out here for people that may not know. Uh, so Git, for the, for the context of this story, GitLab is not being purchased by Microsoft. GitHub is is being mm -hmm. purchased by Microsoft. Uh, this 13,000 projects ditched GitHub for GitLab Monday morning thing is a little out of date. The current number that we have is I believe 150,000 of them have ditched GitHub for GitLab. Um, now, more projects have bailed off of GitHub in that time. Uh, these are just the ones that have gone to GitLab specifically. Yeah. Um, there are other solutions, but that, that's the, the majority of the movers have done that. Now, to put to rest a little bit of the freakout, from the information that I've been able to see online and some of the stuff that's in this exact article, it seems like most people are bailing because they're making like Xbox emulators well here's or I mean, like well, things that microsoft that are going mm -hmm. against microsoft specifically well there's okay obviously something like an emulator you can see the problems there with like ip and copyright infringement but but okay so just uh one example i can think of that has some pretty recent relevance um if you go on youtube shameless plug for tech wiki we did a recent tech wiki episode on dns leak leaks and how uh. they can undermine your privacy and how they can expose your browsing history even if you're using a vpn so let's say you're using a vpn that has um a dns leak protection feature on it yeah um so there is a feature in Windows 8 and in Windows 10, um, it has a really long acronym. I can't exactly remember what it is. Um, SMHNR, I think is what it's called. But it is a feature, and there's a reason I'm doing the quotation fingers, that can apparently even override DNS leak protection and compromise your Ooh. privacy. Yeah. Um, so there was someone on GitHub that wrote a patch for OpenVPN uh, where you could just download it and it would like take care of that for you. When Microsoft considers something like that undermining their own software, if they don't want people doing that, you know, because I mean, copyright infringement is one thing, it's super obvious, but what if it's like there's an actual problem with a Microsoft product like Windows that someone is in good faith trying to fix for people and Microsoft just says no? And people wouldn't know where to look because so many people just kind of automatically go to GitHub and think the stuff is going to be on there. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. And also, I forgot to post the YouTube announcement, so rip. Um, and there's like not even that much time left in the show, but I just published it so people will be able to see. For Watch like, your last seven yeah. minutes or however long we however long we have. I don't know. So uh, anyways, it's it's ooh, it's yeah. People are even thinking projects that could easily be used 
to mm -hmm. harm others, like deep fakes might be a problem. And a lot of those types of projects have bailed already. Okay. Which sucks because deep fakes can also be used to not hurt people. Yeah, just like a power drill. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So like, we'll have to see how Microsoft deals with this. Um, trying to connect, you are offline. Oh, great. Um, I got it. But, but yeah, yeah. I, I just, I don't think it's gonna be as nuclear as people think. I suspect Microsoft isn't gonna do a ton different with it than was already being done with GitHub. Hopefully yeah, everything it's... doesn't become weird colored squares because I really have Oh good lord. Yeah. Really have not enjoyed Microsoft's <laughs> I, I UI mean, for a long time. It kind of depends. I mean, I think there were fears about that with something like UWP for example. Mm. Uh but at the same time, you know, the desktop experience on Windows 10 is still like largely o open in whatever sense you want Garbage. to pick that word. Garbage. I hate the desktop experience on Windows 10. Sorry. Oh, well, oh, it's no, a personal preference. No, I'm I'm not talking about UI. UI is different than whether the platform is open or closed. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. UI is a totally different story. Yeah. Like you can hate the UI all you want to, but um, that is a preference thing. I know some people are gonna screech. I just, uh, yeah, I don't personally. Do you want like to do um, which uh, um, this thing here, or? This thing is better. Either one. Sure. I don't know a ton about it. It is cool. I don't know a ton about it, but let's let's dive into it and see what we can get. So thank you, Quub 3D. Q-U-B-3-D. Q-U-B-3-D. Cubbed? Cute. Oh, I think it's cubed. Oh, and it's just, of course it's cubed. It's just a very tortured spelling of cubed. <laughs> I failed that one. It is cubed for sure. All right. Cube steak. Forbes right. is the source article here, and there's been so once it loads, my internet is uh, not the happiest at the moment. Uh, but there's been some leaks of the Pixel 3. Now, one interesting thing here is that there's going to be three phones. There's going to be the standard normal Pixel. There's going to be the Pixel XL. Those mm -hmm. are already expected. Now there's going to be a mid-range phone, and they don't mean size. They don't mean between the normal size Pixel. They're talking like Pixel power. XL. Yeah. They mean power and price and stuff like that. What is going on? I don't care about your quote of the day. Load the web page, please. It's hard to fly without ruffling a few feathers. <laughs> I'm trying to ruffle your feathers, Forbes. Let me fly, please. Hello. No. Okay. Oh my goodness. Awesome. <sighs> All right, well, the cool part is that there's three phones. There's the affordable Pixel 3, uh, which is the interesting one in this lineup. Not not because the other ones aren't interesting, but because it's new. Um, so the affordable Pixel 3, which is what we're going to call it, instead of mid-range, just so we don't get confused by the sizing things, it is a likely going to be a game changer for mid-range smartphone photography. And that kind of makes sense because a lot of the awesomeness of the Pixel camera is in the software. The and they can put that software on the cheap phone, which is really cool. The 3XL is going to have a notch, however it you feel is. about this. Yeah. That's happening, so. I'm going to, I'm, we'll have to see, but I'm almost certainly going to be getting a Pixel 3. Okay. Um, I currently still have my Pixel 1 XL, and I like this phone a lot, but it's starting to show the signs of being tired. The battery starting to kind of, eh, and yeah. there's like it started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell. I can't. Um, I can't anymore. It's it's still a very good phone. If I wasn't a ridiculous power user of my phone, I wouldn't care that much. But I am a absolute ridiculous power user. Of oh, my we phone. have a power user. Over oh here. yeah, boy. <laughs> um, I'm always on this thing, and I do a lot of stuff on it. So I'm stoked, and I will probably get the XL. Okay. Because I have large hands, I can hide my whole phone. Um, <laughs> So, oh, look at power user with his large hands. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so the the small phones are just a little too small can for me. I, we'll but. see. Can I? Yeah, no, not 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 quite. This this is a six P. So yeah, they're 6, pretty similar I can't, size. Yeah, okay. Um, so I want the XL. That means I have to deal with the notch. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, I haven't really liked notches, but it might work if the notch is small enough, which I can't see because Forbes won't load. Uh, I saw again. some I saw some allegedly leaked images of the thing. It does look a fair bit smaller than the iPhone 10. The notch does, which makes sense, right? Yeah. Because on Android, how it does notifications, it fills them in from the sides, right? But on iPhone, that doesn't happen. They, they, all your notifications are just in that little tray. So, so that if would they, make sense. So if it is just a fairly small one, mm -hmm. that's cool. I'm down. Mm -hmm. 
They, it also has front-facing speakers, which I can't show you because it won't load. By the way, I don't think this is Forbes' fault. Just in case anyone in the audience is like, what the heck? I was making jokes about not being able to fly because of the Forbes thing, whatever. I think it, our internet's being super weird. Um, I know the DNS Because I had this problem earlier, but yeah. Okay. So, I, I don't know. That's super cool. I can't show you what the small one looks like. I can't show you what the mid-range one looks like. Uh, it Apparently, the, the, uh, the mid-range phone is going to be based on Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 710 chipset which promises performance close to 2017's flagship Snapdragon 835. Um, yeah, I, I think that will be cool. Because one big issue that people had with Pixel phones when they started being called Pixel was that they were a lot more expensive than people mm -hmm. wanted. So being able to give a more affordable option is, is cool. That's Definitely. Cool. Maybe, maybe it'll stick. Maybe it'll, be, it'll go the way of the iPhone 5C. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Australian gamers are being blamed for slow internet. Wow. Okay, apparently this was slightly taken out of context. Uh, this is from abc.net.au. Uh, maybe this will load? Uh, maybe not. I'm going to post this in Twitch chat. And if you're watching on YouTube, there are either... Um, timestamps posted in the description of this video, or I have noticed many wonderful people also post their own custom timestamps below the video in the comments. Wow, this looks like it's not properly loading, but it's sort of working, so let's show that screen. Why not? I really like how the image they used for this story is a screen cap from Big Bang. Like what? They don't... What the heck? That is them. What are they doing? Is this like a retro edition? I don't watch this show. I don't know. It's always been kind of weird to me. But anyways, moving on. Uh, believe it or not, some of the biggest online games use very little data when you're playing compared to streaming HD video or even high fidelity audio. So people are slamming back at whoever the heck said this. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Uh, because he's like, gamers are... Blah, 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 blah. But apparently, the within the context that he was saying it, uh, so someone named Moro, I don't know, said it's gamers pro predominantly on fixed wireless. Apparently what he meant is it's that he's typecasting gamers, not saying that games are the right, problem. Right, because later on he said that the people who game are also the Power type of people. They, they tend to like consume more data just across the board, whether it's video or whether it's video. They're watching yeah. Twitch streams. They're watching YouTube. They're... They're streaming audio mm -hmm. while they play their game. They're, these are power users of the internet. Because people asked, uh, he, he originally said extreme users. And then he was asked to clarify on that. So he said it's gamers predominantly on fixed wireless. But I don't think he meant it is video games that are the problem. I think he was saying like, Meh, it's gamers. Which I also think is not necessarily true. Because out of all the people that I know that watch ludicrous amounts of streaming video, it's not necessarily gamers. No, I mean, you have you have people that think, oh, like, video games are stupid. But they'll sit there and they'll binge Netflix for like eight hours at a time. And that takes more bandwidth. So, yeah, it's not... That's not the best look for him, at least to people Coming who like, home, know how. Coming home, cracking yeah. a bottle of wine, yeah. and chugging it while binging multiple seasons at a time of your favorite show. Of, yeah, what, that is what, whatever a lot of people who don't game watch. So I don't, I'm don't. i not very up on this hip alcoholic terminology, so sorry if I said that wrong. But Yeah, it's uh, like wine, yeah? yeah. Do they well, even call it wine anymore? <laughs> I don't know, man. No, I said cracking a bottle of wine, and then I realized you don't do that. You, you un uncork you it. Uncork you, you, you do the thing, and then you, you pull. You crack a bottle of beer. Mm-hmm. I'm a hip man. I'm I'm in with the the, the boys. Now it's time for you to do the mock arena. <laughs> I'm hip. I'm with it. But yeah, I I don't know. I I think it's just something taken out of context. I don't think it's actually what people are freaking out about. People just like screaming. I think the guy's just saying it's power users. It's people that use the internet a lot. Mm -hmm. It's it's this stuff. Yeah. Um. If he actually thinks it's video games, he now for sure knows that it's not. Because everyone on the planet has told him, you're wrong! Um, so I think he gets it now, and we can probably... Hopefully. ...move on. But I thought it was an interesting story anyways, and something to bring up. Australia's internet is actually garbage. Um, and one thing that I, I am very aggressively against is that 
Um, apparently, they've been considering throttling back data consumption of extreme users during peak periods. That's ridiculous. Australia, just fix your freaking internet. It's not that hard. Everyone else has seemed to figure this out. Um, Might be a cost issue. They are in an unfortunate place yeah. for undersea cables. Wait. Figure it out. I don't know what else to say. Australia's internet has been garbage for a very long time. Working at Flowplane, it's super expensive to get bandwidth there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to serve people in Australia videos, and it's hard. It's got to be a cost issue because I mean, I mean, how, how many how many times have we have people coming on the forum saying, "Oh, like this GPU costs almost twice as much in Australia because reasons." So I imagine it might be similar here. I just Australia's internet is just garbage. I know quite a few people from Australia, and it's. It's really, really expensive, and it's really, really bad. Um, and it's a shame, because I, I don't think it needs to be. I understand that there is definitely cost implications, yeah. but there are countries not that far away um, that have really much expensive better Really and really bad. They're the stadium nachos of the internet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Australia. Yeah. You have the stadium nachos of internet. I like that analogy. And you know what I don't understand? Like, people like that fake cheese sauce that tastes like plastic. A lot of people like that stuff. It's disgusting. Why do you even bother? Yeah, it's yeah. so bad. No, just like order a hot dog or something. Like, just Or ugh. do what I did and yeah. smuggle in four spicy chickens from Wendy's into a movie. That's a great idea. And trade them for other things. Bartering with I hope Wendy's no one from, spicy. I hope chickens. no one from Cineplex is watching this. They but. won't let me back into a movie. Boy, I get it done. Also, organic carbon module modules, <laughs> organic carbon molecules found on Mars. NASA's Mars rover Curiosity has identified a variety of organic molecules, the carbon-based building blocks of life as we know it, in 3.5 billion year old rocks on Mars. This does not give us any evidence of life necessarily, but there's a possibility that the organics are a form of an ancient life source of some kind. We just don't know. Another finding is that methane concentrations in Mars atmosphere cycle seasonally. The discovery suggests that the gas is seeping out from underground reservoirs. It is possible that some of the methane was produced by organisms as it is here on Earth. Be very careful that everything in, his, in this has possible um, written all over it. It's not, not necessarily guaranteed. They did find organic carbon molecules and methane concentrations in ours, Mars's atmosphere do cycle around seasonally. We got that. The rest of it is all hypotheticals and possible. I wonder exactly what organics they found because um, obviously, you know, just because it has a carbon atom in it doesn't mean it, you know, came from life. You know, like, see, but a lot so, of people don't know that, which right. is why we gotta we gotta really gotta shove qualify. Home yeah, the, the like, possible. Like methane is an extremely simple molecule; it could form without life around very easily. So yeah. So, I was trying uh, to look through the story to see if there were any more deets, but it didn't say. So. Don't think too many. Um, mm -hmm. But, but yeah, I think that's honestly about it. The rest of the stuff in the doc is not crazy interesting. There's the Amazon thing. We can go over that real quick, but oh, it doesn't have anything yeah. to do with tech, so I don't really know why. It, it kind of it does. I think it does. does it? The fact that they sold that is, well, is that that is Amazon and. I, yeah, I it's guess. a store. Like it's it's an on. I, I don't know why we always end up talking about Amazon. It's, the 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 fact that it was online made it a federal crime. Okay, but online shopping. Yeah, is old as heck, and Amazon is just like taking over the whole planet. That's like they're like political level instead of like basically tech news. But whatever, we'll talk about it. Amazon return policy abusers were sentenced to nearly six years in prison. Basically, they bought a whack ton of GoPros and other stuff. So for two years, the Finans. Not sure what that means. I'm assuming that's, that's their, their last name. name. Yeah, sure. they're a married they're a married couple. Yeah. Okay. They ordered over 2,700 electronic items from Amazon, including GoPro digital cameras, Xboxes, smartwatches, tablets, laptops, and then they reported them as damaged, and that somehow didn't get flagged automatically. They used a lot of like shell accounts and stuff, so they did it from like a bunch of different accounts ah, to try okay. to avoid detection. Good job, VPNs, I'm assuming. Uh, once uh -huh. Amazon replaced the products, they would sell them to a third person, Denigel Glumak. I probably Is that a typo? That I don't name. know. I, I'm, it does, I'm assuming it, it, it it's doesn't supposed even to be matter. Daniel Glumak, but currently it's D-A-N-I-J-E-L. 
which is a pretty cool name. Um, Dangel. That's if that is. <laughs> I'm sure it's just Daniel, but if that is his name, that name is sick. Someone Don should Gell. steal that as a screen name. I should get a dog and name it Dangel. Dangel. <laughs> uh, in all, Aaron and Leah Finan are said to have made approximately seven hundred fifty thousand dollars running the scam, while Glumac made approximately five hundred thousand dollars. So, um, the the couple they got nearly six years each. Uh, the accomplice got uh, two years, twenty four months. Um, so, I thought this was interesting because just from from a legal perspective, legal corner with John, real quick, real quick here, they um, they were prosecuted federally. Okay, because it was done across state lines, and the feds are pretty serious about like winning cases against people. Like, if like like I think the feds have like an over ninety percent conviction rate when they bring charges against people, and if you go to federal prison, I think the rule is you have to serve eighty five percent of your sentence before you're eligible for parole. So they're not, they're not oh, getting out for a little while. Okay. Yeah. So apparently, this wasn't the only thing that happened. I again, I don't know why Amazon means that we're talking about it, but the Amazon fraud <laughs> wasn't the only problem. Uh, they also bounced checks. They rented cars and failed to pay for them. They sold other oh, stolen high-end dear. goods. Yeah. And they withheld rent, all of which are actions that were taken into account during the sentencing, none of which mean that it makes sense being on the WAN show. I and just, on that note... Yeah, I just realized I'm responsible for having this on here. I'm sorry. I just don't... I just, I just don't... Now I feel bad. Anyways, thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. I think it's time for a morale meeting next week. <laughs> like, we need to have a company-wide dialogue oh, on no. how we, like, treat the contributions of our fellow employees. Oh, no, and the I, notes I, were I, so good. I think it's high time for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I just, we always talk about Amazon stuff, and sometimes they do tech-related things, but not always. Thank you very much, Squarespace. Alexa! Thank you very much. See? Like, that Alexa. makes sense. Thank you very much, LTX, so us, for sponsoring the show. And thank you very much, FreshBooks, for sponsoring Freshbooks. the show. I just, okay, so my, I just, it's not always tech stuff. When they make the stores where you can just walk in and walk out and you just get your stuff, like, that's cool. That's tech Go. stuff. Go, yeah. I did a tech week on Amazon Go. It was good. Yeah, that's pretty I thought it was good, but. Yeah. They do have a yep. lot of tech news, but it's not just automatically. I don't know. Anyways, I'm sorry, John. Bye, everyone. I'll see you next time.